Welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. I literally feel like it's been forever, <laughs> five ever, since I've just sat next to you and especially not talking about muscles. Yes, I'm excited to have just a normal hangout conversation with you. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, how do you feel like the muscle series went? How do you feel about this is something, a series we've done in the past and we refurbished it. We did a lot of new with it. I'm personally extremely proud of it, but I'd love to know your thoughts on it. So I thought the uh, series went well. It was just a lot to take on, mm -hmm. which is a common theme for a lot of the projects that we do take on of um, trying to do the most, trying to do the best as well as providing the best quality as well. And uh, I thought the series was great. I got a lot of great messages, uh, DMs, people being able to utilize it, better understand uh, different muscles and being able to train the muscles properly uh, amongst many other things. But I thought overall it was successful. What was your thoughts? I feel very similarly. It was a lot of work, but I'm extremely proud of everything that we put into it and the changes that we made. That's something that I've been proud of through all of physique development, if I feel like when we do make iterations, we do really try to look back on what worked, what didn't, what we specifically liked about it, what we wish would change and being able to implement that. So like having the cheat sheets, having the guests, having things broken down clearer and more actionable and really being able to talk about what that looks like in real life. I feel like we accomplished all of that. I do feel my only regret about it all was, well, I guess taking it all on and not having everything planned out, but that I feel like because we spent so much time on the actual episodes, I didn't talk about it to other people as much as I feel like I would want to. But it was also something because we worked on it for so many months before it came out. It kind of was that aspect of I feel like I've been talking about this so much that then it was – not old news, but do you know what I'm saying? If it's just like you've been in it so long that you forget that other people haven't been in it the same way that you have? Yeah, this is also a continuing theme that we have to fix is that we fall short on the promotion of these things that we put so much time into. And the reality is, is that the product can be as amazing as it can be, but without people knowing that it exists, it doesn't really matter. And so uh, over the, the good thing with podcasts specifically, and the podcasts themselves performed well, I'm not sitting here saying that uh, people didn't hear them or what have you, but I'm saying that um, this series alone can help so many people. You know, One of the things that we have such an emphasis on, not only is it to be the last coach that you need so that you're able to have the education and understanding to take control of your health, but we also want to make training and nutrition accessible for everyone. And this series alone is, I have messages uh, stating that it's better than the biomechanics courses and anatomy courses that they took in college. We're giving it to you for free. These college courses were tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and we're making that accessible to everyone. So it's in perfect alignment with what our larger mission is of being able to provide training and nutritional knowledge for the masses. Mm -hmm. And what I was just looking up here was, I thought that it was in July that we launched it, but I was double checking. So it was July 1st that we launched the Muscle Series. And we did do like a Muscle Series hype um, podcast beforehand, but then leading up to it, because we had already been recording in the background, then I'd done a bunch of gym girl chat. So it's really has been a minute since you and I sat down. I had We had a lot of guests on uh, before between you and I actually sitting down to chat about this. So it's been months. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> so what all has been going on? Let's just even go from July. Obviously, it's been since before that because of all the guest episodes. But we got, we got to get filled in on your half marathon. We got to get filled in on a lot since July. <laughs> okay. Um, let's stay on the topic of us going back and forth with like the promotion of things. Okay. Because one of the things that transpired in the time away from us um, – podcasting was that we held our first webinar, mm -hmm. which was a tremendous success and really had a lot of fun with it. I look forward to doing so many more of those, um, a big learning experience, <laughs> another situation <laughs> where it was a bigger task than what we had made it out to be, or me specifically. And so that was amazing. But then 
uh, on the topic of promotion, that was the most I had ever talked about one specific thing continuously um, ever in my life. And even by the last time that I had posted about it, there was still people seeing it for the very first time. I had f uh, five reels that I made directly about the the webinar itself, as well as talking about it consistently in my story. And like I said, up until the day of, people were just seeing it for the first time. And so that's one thing that I still am trying to work through my thick skull <laughs> of, I, I need to be so exhausted from it before everyone even gets the opportunity to hear about it. Yeah, but it's hard because especially all the planning that goes into it, like you're in it for so long before it even becomes public knowledge. So it feels like I've been talking about this for months and months that then it just becomes this point of, okay, I've already talked about this. And with you saying of like, okay, I posted about it five times. Like it does feel like a lot to post about something that much. But I know for a fact, like we've done stuff like that and people still being like, oh, I didn't know about this. And that's always a sombering moment of like, oh, wait, people first aren't paying as close attention as you think. And people don't actually know what's going in on your day to day if you're not telling them. And a lot of projects we work on behind the scenes before other people know what's going on. Yeah. And everybody has so much going on. Mm -hmm. Like they're not on social near as much as you may think and certainly not paying attention to you directly as <laughs> much as you think. Majority of people are just focusing on themselves, which is what majority of people should be doing and taking care of themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but to answer the question on what we've been doing since July... I guess the first thing would be my half marathon and the uh, craziness that that was in general. So to give a picture here, we went to Italy mm -hmm. two weeks for, we were, we were there for 10 days, but this was two, two and a half weeks prior to the half marathon. I had already scheduled to run this half marathon before we got the dates that we were going to Italy. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the year, I had planned to run a half marathon and because of injury did not run that half marathon. My brain works in absolutes. That is its default setting. I had told myself that I was not backing out of another race. Thus, when we found out about Italy, I committed myself to no matter what, I'm running this stupid half marathon. A blessing and a curse, honestly. <laughs> it helps me in some situations and hinders me in others. <laughs> so with the time in Italy, it was absolutely amazing. It was really great to be able to see the country. Um, the two favorite places that we went were Lake Como and Florence. The other two locations that we went to were still great, just not my two favorites, I suppose, uh, being Rome and Milan not Mulan. Yeah. You thought about it for a second there, didn't you? <laughs> you kept telling people we're going to Mulan and to Paris. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I was lost. I mean, we were very busy leading into yeah, the trip. We were so unbelievably busy leading into it. We barely had time to be excited about it because we were so busy leading into it. Yes. So leading into the time, I literally was training. I was working. I was eating and sleeping. And that was just the repeat of what my life looked like getting ready for this half marathon. And so then being in Italy, walking 12 to 20 K steps from all the things that we were doing. And then I was running on top of it, trying to at least. You ran a lot of like there would be days where we literally just walked for 20,000 steps straight. We come back. I'm so tired. I get in bed because we have like an hour or two before dinner because they eat dinner at midnight. And Alex is like, do you want to come to the gym with me? I'm like, no, I don't want to freaking go to the gym with you. He's like, I'm going to go run. I was like, we just walked like 12 miles. Yeah, psychotic. I mean, it was it was a lot on my lower body. And I tried to keep up by eating as much gelato and pizza <laughs> as I possibly could, which I don't even think I kept up in that way because I lost – uh, like 10 or 12 pounds while we were away in Italy. Mm -hmm. Now this is in part two. I also came down with the flu yeah. <laughs> at the tail end of Italy, uh, as did Sue. Mm -hmm. So we were both sick at the end. Um, that leads me into the week prior to the half marathon where I'm dealing with the flu, trying to get back healthy. I'm not running cause I'm trying to recover. And the Thursday, so the, the marathon is on Sunday, the Thursday prior to it, I'm getting really nervous because I do not feel close 
to 100% healthy. I'm still sick. I'm still pretty sick. I'm not running a fever any longer, but I'm still pretty sick. Um, and I take like the latter half of that day off and just try to relax, eat, and sleep as much as humanly possible. And I wake up on Friday feeling decent, mm -hmm. decent enough to where I think I could run that day, but I'm going to actually just. I'm going to save as much of my energy as possible to full send on Sunday with this race, even though I have not run now for about 10 days from being sick um, and get the packet and getting to see everybody was very motivating because it was a massive event. Yeah. And just to make sure this timeline makes sense, we were in Italy. We got back on a Monday and his half marathon was the following Sunday. Right. So six days in between getting back, he got sick halfway through the trip, literally spent a whole entire day in the hotel in his bed and even ate all of his meals in the bed and everything. And if you know Alex, you know he is a no food in the bed type of situation, not even snacks. We've even thought about, oh, maybe just popcorn in bed. And he thought about it for a second. And he was like, let's just sit downstairs then if we're, we shouldn't have food in the bed, which I appreciate now. Like I, I'm not dogging on you, but just to show how sick you truly were that you ate all of your meals in bed and stayed in bed the entire day should stand for something. Yes. Um, and then I got to the half marathon and uh, really thrived off of the energy on Sunday morning, just off of the crowd and my full commitment of, I'm going to do this. The full belief in myself <laughs> oh, that I'm going God. to do this. Um, it being my first one ever and it being so massive, I had no idea where to go, what to do, anything at all. So I was figuring it out on the fly, uh, talking to people in line and kind of figuring it out. And uh, at the beginning of the race, I was pacing well. My goal was to be able to run nine minute miles throughout and then try to push it towards the end to get at 845 and in total run it under two hours. And so I was pacing well around the six mile marker. I'm caught into a, a big cluster of people that are not running at the pace that I want them to. And so I am trying to pass this group as I look up and try to pass my right foot falls into a pothole and my ankle rolls and I can feel my ankle swelling almost <laughs> instantaneously at this point. Again, going back to the absolute <laughs> mentality in my head of do I pull off and go to the, the tent here to get this looked at, or do I just fully commit to the last? He's <laughs> read a few too many David Goggins <laughs> Do I fully commit to the last seven miles and we'll figure it out when I get to the finish line? I fully committed to the last seven miles and my ankle towards the last two to three miles was just basically unresponsive. <laughs> my right leg did not do, oh, I was gosh. kind of almost as if I was running with a peg leg <laughs> through the last two to three miles. Um, I was not sure I was going to make it. All that to be said. <laughs> <laughs> Made it in under two hours, bitches. <laughs> All that to be said. I ran it under two hours and um, I'm still dealing with his ankle. <laughs> this ankle is not doing well. Um, oh my gosh. We wanted to see the swelling go down before I got x-rays and things. Then the swelling went down and I said, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> typical Alex as well has like one day of feeling like a little bit better and he's like I'm I'm ready to go and so after after that and the x-ray like we didn't get the x-rays because I thought I felt better and I ran on it and it felt terrible yeah so he rested and he was talking about how it hurts so bad to even like walk and stand on it then it started to get to the point as the swelling went down he was like I'm feeling better to like walk and stand on it I'm gonna rest a few more days but then he gets to playing with the dogs and he runs a little bit with Tucker and he goes I felt better when I was running so I think I just need to run goes and runs and is like incapacitated <laughs> so then I've taken the last I don't know two or three weeks off mm -hmm. of running completely and I ran for five minutes it's continuous yesterday morning after walking on the treadmill and being very well warmed up. Um, and that felt fine. Zero pain. I could fatigue, yeah, fatigue, but not pain. Um, so that was a positive. I'm going to give that another whirl today and uh, see how it feels, but we're going to keep monitoring it. And if it does not get better, I have 
fully agreed to go get x-rays, see what's actually going on. And then- Well, now it's recorded, so yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and that kind of brings us to, to this point right now. Yeah. So uh, would you run another half marathon? Yes, I would run another half. Really? Yeah. I would definitely mm -hmm. run another half. I do not think that I would run a full. A full- seems miserable to me. 26.2 miles, uh, not only boring, but I just don't see the full enjoyment of preparing for it. It's a, I mean, it's a lot of time commitment. Mm -hmm. um, my focus now, as I get healthy with my, with my ankle, is uh, running really great 5Ks. I wanna get very good with the, the three mile interval and um, being able to run a 5K in under 20 minutes is my big, big target. Gotcha. So that's a big step up. Yeah. So are you like wanting to run like in races then or just like on your own time? Uh, I'm going to do it on my own time for now. But as the weather warms up, I'm going to uh, get into races at that point. I've also noticed that I'm a fair weathered runner. I just prefer it to be in the summer. I don't have the the drive as much to run when it's cold outside. But you mostly run inside anyway. I don't know why you're so fixated on where I'm running at. I'm just saying in terms of the weather in general. Okay, I can understand that. Of like the sun makes you want to do more things, but like you were already running in the morning when it was still dark out downstairs inside. Again, I don't, that is, <laughs> doesn't matter. That, that part does not matter. Okay. It's just that the the summer is when I'm like, I enjoy running. And now that it's getting cold and dreary and there's no sun whatsoever. <laughs> okay. There's I'm not, <laughs> I'm not interested in running right now. Okay. Fair enough. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible for you. You should lift heavy. High reps, Carbs low are reps, needed. Keto Squats are bad for your Squats needs. are great You should squat astrograph. It's fine. It fits my macros. It's for idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. What's been going on with you since Italy? Oh, I don't even know. Where do I start? What has been going on with me? I've been sucking in fantasy football for <laughs> absolutely no reason. I should have won multiple games that I didn't win, and it is affecting my mental health, honestly. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. That's what's been on my mind is Packers football and fantasy football absolutely hurting my mental health. I will say one thing that has made me tremendously happy from you being in Italy is that uh, my bookworm wife <laughs> is back. Oh, I mean, I have over the past, uh, in October, I read eight books um, in the span of 10 days. <laughs> Pretty incredible. And uh, they were all like five, 600,000 page books. And then I'm rereading a series that I already love. And I literally started the last book that is currently in the series. They're still coming out with new books um, for Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I'm on the a Court of Silver Flames. And I literally started it on Sunday and um, read a little bit. But then on Monday, because I had a bunch of calls and then there was like awkward breaks in between, I ended up getting half way through the book. So that's where I'm at now. <laughs> and I'm, I, I thought that rereading a book I'd already read would slow me down because I'm like, I already know what happens. But I forgot some of the small details. And it was really fun because and I thought I would not ever reread a book like that. But it's so fun because there's so many little things that now rereading it, I'm catching that I didn't catch because I didn't know the first time. And so that's been like really fun. But now I'm afraid to get into another book and then it just take over everything because I have a hard time stopping like I can stop watching a TV show but it's very hard for me to stop reading a book yeah it's it's fascinating to watch you, you've you've gone an extended period of time of not reading yeah books. like a, a, literally the last book I read was when we went on our five-year wedding anniversary July of last year yeah and so you've had some time away and now you've just reignited it 
I love seeing you read. It's like <laughs> one of my favorite things for you because I know how great it is for your mind. Um, I think it does a lot for your mood and um, your ability to storytell and write for yourself too. Mm -hmm. And it brings down my phone screen time a little bit. Quite a bit. Not yeah. a little bit, quite a bit. Pro tip, it's nice if you just keep a book in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, just, I feel like people get on their phones in the bathroom, so. Yeah, so having a book in there is probably good. So you've read a lot of books. What else has happened? Other than reading, I've really just been doing a lot of stuff in the business. So we had some staff changes and we got some new people added to the team, which is very exciting, but had to go through the process of putting out the applications, interviewing people, getting the people confirmed that they're on the team, then onboarding them and going through our onboarding process is something where that's something I actually recently, the podcast that'll play before this is one where I actually met with Alex Moe's girlfriend, who you just had on the podcast, and we talked about business ownership. And I mentioned that one of the hardest parts or things that I didn't know what it was going to be like is the hiring and the firing and how the onboarding process has just gotten better and better each time because just kind of like I talked about within our projects of going through the different iterations and fine tuning it, I've seen the flaws of, oh, because we didn't onboard this way, then the person wasn't set up for the most success or being able to do this and this we've seen helps our staff like perform better. And so that's been something that has just my time has really been dove into that, the webinar, and then while we didn't have someone in for sales, then I've been taking um, the sales calls. So that's been fun to just be able to be in a place where I don't always get to be on the sales calls. Um, it's been very exhausting and a lot of time, but it's something where it's allowed me to understand the process even better so that getting Sherry onboarded has been better and being able to help her more, as well as just being able to connect with people, which I always love. It's been really special to talk with people that they're like, oh, I've followed you for since 2017 or since 2020, and just to really be able to connect with people because that's something that I so love to be able to do, and I love it even more when I get to help people. Like, like my overall mission in life, I feel, is to help people. And that's where I started even within starting my fitness Instagram and becoming a coach myself was due to me being so lost. And as I started to figure stuff out, I just wanted to scream it from the mountaintops and be like, how can I help someone else? Because I used to feel so lost in all of this and feel that I couldn't eat certain foods and that it was very restrictive and that I could never look a certain way and feel a certain way. And now being on the other side of that, it's something that I just want to show people. Like it doesn't have to be these restrictive diets. It doesn't have to be miserable. It doesn't have to feel like you're putting and so much work and getting no results for it. And so being able to guide people on that process through our sales process has been really rewarding to, to just be able to be a part of. Absolutely. Um, that is the one thing I miss about being on the sales calls is being able to have the connection and being able to hear some of the direct stories of the people um, as they're inquiring. So I'm glad that you've had that experience. You've been so busy. Yeah. So busy. It's um it was something where since we were trying to take the whole time we were in Italy off of work, which we didn't necessarily do, but we were trying to do that. So it was a lot of work beforehand to get everything set, but it was untimely as far as how everything happened and having to let go of certain people on the team that then going into the trip, we were like, okay, we're just gonna be gone for 10 days and then we're gonna make it happen and came back and had to fill in on two different roles that I wasn't necessarily expecting fully to. And so to go from trying to play catch up with my own work and I already have a very full plate to then adding two more jobs to it and still having those two jobs um, throughout like since October 10th, and now it's coming into the end of this, um, end of November, then it's just been a lot wearing on me. Um, so it's been nice to not be in front of a screen and to be able to read. Um, but it's just been definitely a push of a season. But it's something where I just keep reminding myself that it is a season because I feel like in moments like these, this is where a lot of people want to give up of this feels really hard and it's been hard for a little bit. But I'm able to look at it and first recognize that overall, like what I want 
is physique development success because of the mission that we do have. Like that mission is my success, but that means physique development being successful. And so that means like me stepping up to the plate and doing things I don't necessarily want to do. I don't have the time to do. I don't have the desire to do, but still stepping up and doing them because I know this is a season. This is temporary. And even though it's already felt like a push up until now, and this feels like a push on top of a push, it's like, this is temporary, do what needs to be done and recognize like it doesn't have to be like this for forever. And that's something I'm really thankful for because I we get a lot of questions of how we work within our relationship of being married and owning a business together. And it's been extremely positive for me of just it's forced us to get better and better at communication. But it's also been something where I don't feel guilty in these moments where I know that if I didn't have a partner in it with me who also is like pushing me to be my best, then I might feel guilty of having to spend more time on work. Like they're, they've just been longer days. I can't fit all of the work I need to get done in a 10 hour day or even a 12 hour day. So they're 14 plus hour days. And I'm just so grateful for a partner who understands, who knows it's temporary and is there to support me in the meantime and do what you can do to make sure that we're still like getting over that finish line or still hitting that marker. And that's something that I never take for granted because it's, it's, integral for our success overall to have these pushes, to have these seasons. And it's just good to have someone by my side who gets that. I love you. I love you. I love getting down this business with you. I love getting to grow this business with you. And over the last three years, it's been a, a period where we've had to really step outside of our comfort zone. The thing that comes so easily to me is that I can nerd out and research on muscles and nutrition and um, helping clients get the best results of their life. That part is easy to me. I love that and it is it lights my soul on fire. The thing that is the most challenging, the thing that is the most outside of my comfort zone is being a leader and building a business and building a culture. And those are things that to me, I thought I could just lead. I could just do my thing, be an example, and people would follow suit. And I've come to very quickly find out over the last three years that that is not how this works. And you have to be vocal and you have to better communicate. And um, you know, over this three years, it has been a massive transformation and challenge in my mindset and how I, uh, how I lead and how we uh, cultivate the culture of physique development. I, I may have said this in times past uh, because I believed it at the time, but now even more is that this is the, the best culture and team that we have had within physique development of everyone truly playing their part and wanting what's best for the team. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful thing and comes directly from you and, and myself, but it, more specifically you, because you're so integrated with every single role on the team um, to have such a beautiful culture. Yeah, it's definitely been a, um, a work um, in progress to get to that point. And it's been a lot of quote unquote failing and times where it felt like it was never going to get to this point to get here. And that's something where it just feels really good to be surrounded by people who care and want to be good at their job and want to align with our core values and just inherently do align with our core values to be able to get to this point. Because I know we've said it multiple times, but like if you want to go like fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And it really isn't possible without all the other roles supporting everything to get to the spot. Like, of course, you do need the person there to, to be the good coach or to know what they're doing. And like that drives what the vehicle of everything is. But to be able to have the client experience that we want to have, to have the um, like sales experience we want clients to have, to be able to have everything up to date and organized so that we're able to do our best work and each person is able to do their job within hiring the right people, but also making sure that people know what their roles are, making that very clear, and truly just wanting them to do that role instead of saying you want them to do one thing, but expecting them to do something else. And so that's been definitely a big part of leadership, of figuring all of that out um, and trying to keep everyone together as well. One thing that I've had to continue to reiterate to myself over this time is uh, – you know, if, if you pray for resilience, 
you're going to be given challenges and adversity and you can't whine and run away from the adversity that was handed to you to teach you the resilience. Um, and, and I, the level of resilience, the level of self-confidence that has come from the adversity and the challenges and moments of, uh, very easy could have just thrown in the towel and said, this is too much. This is, this is too much for us. And we need, we can go a different direction and this will be more comfortable, easier, whatever, um, would have just been in exchange for temporary comfort for long-term what ifs. And I'm tremendously proud of us over this time where we have 100% every time opted for the long-term success and betterment of everyone over the short-term comfort. And uh, it has just pushed me as a person more than anything. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more as far as pushing as a person and pushing you outside of that comfort zone. But it is so true of like, so often we ask for something in our lives of I want this success or I want this resilience or I want to be looked at this certain way, but not recognizing everything it takes to get there. And like, resilience is truly built from going through tough times. You're not going to have it from going through easy times because there's no possible way to really gain resilience in that. And I think that looking through that lens just helps it all make sense instead of looking at it of this feels like a failure or this feels like just another thing and why can't it be easier? And it's like the path that you're asking for isn't an easy one. So why do you expect it to be easy? Just like we talk about within muscle or glute growth, it's going to take longer than what most people want success in any realm takes a lot longer and you have to be more consistent than what you think you do. And we run into that a lot with clients of people just being like, I'm putting effort forward. Why am I not seeing the change? And like the only thing you're entitled to is the work itself. So you just putting in work and you putting in effort doesn't inherently mean that you're going to get the result that you want. And I think that that's something where like, yes, you have to work hard, but it's the aspect of recognizing hey, it might be a little bit harder or I might have to be a little bit smarter about how I go about this to actually get what I want uh, instead of just looking at it through that short lens. You're banking off of the compounded interest of penny deposits. You're not going to have these massive leaps of depositing hundreds or thousands of dollars into the piggy bank um, and understanding that no nothing that you're going to do is going to plan to have those big deposits you're going to continue the daily actions and the penny deposits and something is going to catch fire of those penny deposits and then you're going to get a big spike and then it's going to go back to the penny deposits and you're going to get another big spike and it's not anything that you're going to plan inherently you're just going to continue to do what you were supposed to do every single day within the small habits that you have established as positive for you um and that's just the reality of the approach that you have to take. And the person who is constantly thinking that they're going to have this big payoff is one, going to be pretty consistently frustrated. Mm -hmm. Two, they're, they're going to be in a state where um, they're just let down all the time. Not only frustration, but let down because these big payoffs to these events or things that they're thinking are going to give them this big return are not going to come to fruition because the daily habits leading up to that thing may have not been correct. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s, able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program. Because you are awesome and I want you to have this program, I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. 
Where do you feel like it is where it's like, okay, I've been going at this and I've been staying consistent and I'm not gaining the result that I want. Where do you think it is for, okay, I need to try something different or I need to stay the course and just recognize this is going to take more reps? I think it comes down to how consistent were you really? Like how much are you tracking the thing that you are uh, doing and are you looking at how you can improve that specific thing or are you just saying chalked it up, did it and going on to the next day and not analyzing what you did and saying, okay, I can do this a little bit better and see how this does for me tomorrow. We can look at it in the lens of, of uh, tracking your nutrition. If you think that you're eating 1800 calories every day, um, and one day you tracked and the foods that you were eating were pretty much right. And you just continue to eat that same meals over and over again. But there's some times where you're snacking on this here and you're snacking on this here, but you're not tracking that. It's not that big a deal. It's just a little bit. And you look at the scale and it's like, well, now my scale weight's going up. It's like, well, you weren't actually eating the, the same amount of food. You were eating more and you weren't keeping track of it, but you were telling the story in your head that you were eating the same thing. So now you're upset because you've told yourself this narrative that didn't actually exist. You've made it up and you need to keep more accurate data. And I can speak for myself from a, a content standpoint or the, recording the podcast. I re-listen to all the podcast. I review all of our content that is made and I pick it apart, not from a sense of belittlement to me. There's a difference between belittlement and, and criticism. Like criticism is something where we can get better at this. I have the ability to get better at this thing. And so I can criticize what we did or what I may have missed on in particular things within the podcast or content that we created. And that's okay. I can, I can take that self-criticism. I need to be able to take that self-criticism to elevate to the place that I want to be. Um, and the more that you're able to look at yourself in those situations, rather than pointing the finger at, at this person or this thing, <clears throat> the quicker you're going to get to the result that you want to have. And so to put a timeline on how long should you try this thing, I think that the question should more be, how accurate are you being at tracking the thing that you're wanting to improve upon? If you're being tremendously accurate in the thing and you've done it for, let's say, 90 days with whatever it is, it may be a time for you to evaluate and pivot into a, a change in whatever that thing may be. You know, we're looking at so many different yeah. possible things of, of having success. But if you're able to put 90 days of 100% tracked and improved habits and diligency on the thing that you're working towards, I think 99% of people would be blown away at what could be accomplished in that 90 days if they had that level of diligency. Mm -hmm. To even then see what the data is saying of what changes need to be made. Because I feel like people get lost in, do I make this change? Do I make this change? There's so much information out there. And it's you have to stick to something. You can't just be changing all the time and thinking, since I'm going to the latest thing, that means I'm going to get that result ASAP, right. it's being able, like with the uh, concept of content, it's not just, oh, I tried something once or I tried something twice. It's I tried something 10 plus times and truly put everything into this and looked at all of the data, not just, oh, did it get a lot of views? Did it get a lot of likes? What did it actually end up doing? And I think that that's something that has been instrumental for us across the board is making within our coaching, within our business, within just not building a narrative is making data-driven decisions and having the means to track that data instead of just getting so caught up in what we think is happening. Because I feel like that's been something, especially between you and I over the past three or so years, is not building a narrative of what we think or what could have happened. It's just having a conversation, like having open conversation and having data to be able to go over things. And that squashes so much of the uncertainty of the not knowing and the back and forth. And it just allows us to make a decision. And even if it's like that decision might have to change in the future, making that decision at least brings us closer instead of not making a decision because not making a decision is still a decision. And I think a lot of people forget that of like you are making a decision with your lack of decision. Exactly. And now you have to you you have to now live with what that means, whether that's a consequence, maybe whether that's whatever it may be like you now have to put up with that because you decided to not make a decision, especially in the concept of 
physique development and using ourselves as the example here, like it would be so easy for me to let my emotions take over with physique development. It puts a roof over our head. It provides jobs for people I really care about. I invest almost all of my time, seven days a week into this, working with my clients, figuring out ways to continue to grow the business, so on and so forth. It would be so easy to just let my emotions drive everything. And in the past, I did. It was <laughs> miserable. <don't> <laughs> it was miserable. It was not effective for me. It was not effective for the people around me. And getting to the place of just focusing on the data, tracking things properly, allows for the two to be as separate as they can be, um, where I still think that there is, it's, there's a place within business building or um, – you know, building a brand, that emotion has to play its mm -hmm. role. Um, but when you're making decisions that are for the betterment of everyone involved, the data has to drive the decision. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, yeah, emotion is there. You're not going to necessarily be able to take all bias or all emotion out of it, but being able to minimize it and still have those emotions, not that you're just shutting out those emotions and they don't matter, but being able to make the decisions truly based off of the data. And then you can feel whatever way you want to feel about it can still suck. And that's the other thing is sometimes doing the right thing doesn't feel like the right thing. And that's something that I didn't expect either. I thought like the right thing will always feel like the right thing. It'll always be like, this feels good to make this decision. But sometimes making the right decision feels really fucking shitty. And that's something that you have to overcome of not just letting, oh, what if I'm making this person upset? Or what if I feel bad about this? That doesn't have as much room as I thought it did have in this aspect of like, oh, trust my gut. It's like you can still trust your gut, but not take every single emotion that you have and push it towards things or think that everything is supposed to feel good, where there's some things that just feel bad, even though you're making the right decision for everyone involved. And it separates you from the thing doing well or not doing well. Yeah. Um, it, you know, with the videos that we make, the podcast, the uh, the client work, all those things are in my mind a direct reflection of myself. I'm getting feedback of how I look from people. I'm getting feedback of am I right or wrong from people. And it was very easy to get that feedback and either it be elevated because people were praising me or or be really brought down because people were disagreeing with me or calling me fat or whatever the thing was or not in shape. And somebody listening to the podcast called me skinny and I did not love that. <laughs> <laughs> they said, never take advice from, never take muscle building advice from skinny people. And I just want to come through the screen with that person. <laughs> but see, like, that's the thing. I, I, you have to separate and have them be data driven decisions, but then also the internet is the internet and they're going to say what they need to say. And focusing on the data allows for you to take that personal impact away from it, or at least decrease it a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that we could sit here and chat for hours and hours, but I do also know that we are busy bees. So I think that we should go ahead and cut this one. Is there anything that you want to give people a heads up on anything coming up that you want to shout out before we wrap this up? The one thing is, is that I would love for you guys to share the podcast. You know, one thing that the only way that this continues to grow is with your all's help of sharing the episodes with people that you care about, with friends, with family, whomever. And so please, we appreciate it abundantly for you all to share the podcast. Um, the second thing would be coming up on the horizon, more webinars, mm -hmm. more webinars. If you guys have topics that you would like for myself and Sue to cover or the physique development team, uh, there will be a form at the bottom as there always is in the show notes uh, for you guys to, to input things that you would like to hear about. I would love to hear that. I want to do more uh, over 2025 for sure. And uh, my birthday is this Saturday, mm -hmm. the 23rd of November. So you would have that's already passed by the time you hear this episode. I still wish him a happy birthday anyways. And then December is the 10 year anniversary of physique development. Mm -hmm. Coming from the the silly <laughs> videos on YouTube um, and now to where it is, it's very incredible. And I look forward to 
probably doing a video of some sort, kind of cataloging it all in some way. Yeah. And I'll just mirror your first thing of sharing the episode or sharing any resources because through the calls I've been having, I've been hearing so many people say how much they appreciate our resources. And we are so willing and wanting to continue to give away free education. But all that we ask is that you share it because exactly like Alex said, this can't just go off of, I wish that it would keep going. And I'm especially honestly going to call out the coaches that listen to this. There are a lot of you that do not share it because you have your own business and you don't want this to compete with it. But if you are consuming this education and this information for free, the least that you can do is at least share it. And that does not take away from your own thing. I mean, I share plenty of people's stuff. um, And if you view it as competition, then maybe just be better at what you do. um, And it wouldn't be competition. Uh, I don't want that to come across any which way. It's literally just that if you are utilizing this, the least that you can do is share it, give it a rating. Um, Because at this point, like this is something we do from our own goodwill. We spend thousands and thousands on this podcast and we currently do not make any money off of it. So if you love this podcast, you're like, I listen every Monday and Thursday because now the Fitbits are coming out on Thursday. Please show us that you love it. Give it a rating, share it with a friend, something, and we would greatly appreciate it. Awesome. Peace out. Bye.